Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today, we're going to take a withdrawal from the Knowledge Bank. On episodes like these, I take you through a specific aspect of the Commander format. This show and episodes like this one are possible because of viewers like you. So if you're looking for some easy ways to help support the show, make sure you like this episode and share it with friends. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Thank you to everyone who's already purchased our merchandise, it really does help support the channel. Another easy way to support this channel is by using our TCG Player affiliate links. So make sure that you're looking for those links in the description whenever you're buying a deck or just individual cards. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today let's go over some staple substitutions. The commander format has plenty of great staples but some can get a bit expensive. So for some of these staples it might be a good idea to have a budget alternative in mind. For these alternatives, I'm only going to be considering cards that can be used in the exact same deck as the staple. So they either have to be the same color, or they have to be an artifact or a land. And these alternatives are going to be significantly cheaper than the staple. First up, there's the very powerful Demonic Tutor. It's a card that's so powerful that it's banned in Legacy and it's restricted in Vintage. Although it's powerful, it's extremely simple. It's a sorcery for one and a black, and it says, search your library for a card, put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. There are a lot of great tutors in Commander, but in my opinion, this one has got to be the best overall. A tutor that can get you any card for just two mana is absolutely unheard of. If you want to include this in your deck, though, you've got to pay the price. Currently, it's $24.29, which isn't exactly cheap, but it's a lot cheaper than it was before it was reprinted. In a singleton format like Commander, tutors are a very powerful thing. When Demonic Tutor is in your hand, it's essentially any card in your deck plus two mana. So if you need some targeted removal or a board wipe, this can easily go get you that. If you need a specific card for a combo piece, it can get you that too. Whatever you need, this card's going to get you for a very low price. Now, there's no other tutor in Commander that's nearly as efficient as this, at least for ones that can get any kind of a card directly into your hand. But still, there are plenty of great budget tutor options that you can use instead of this, and their price tag is going to be a lot more manageable than $25. First up, there's Diabolic Tutor, which is the exact same thing as Demonic Tutor. There is one major difference, though. Demonic Tutor only costs one into black, and Diabolic Tutor costs two black black. So it's going to cost you two more mana, and it's got a more restrictive cost. Now, Diabolic Tutor still sees a ton of play in Commander, and for good reason. A tutor that can get you any card for four mana is still a very good deal. Again, it's nowhere near as efficient as Demonic Tutor, but no tutors are. There's obviously a reason that Demonic Tutor is banned in Legacy. Regardless, Diabolic Tutor is a great deal for just 40 cents, and if you're looking for a tutor in black, this is a great place to start. Next up, there's Mastermind's Acquisition, which is basically a functional reprint of Diabolic Tutor in Commander. It's a sorcery for two black black, and it says choose one. Search your library for a card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Or choose a card you own from outside the game and put it into your hand. Now, that second option your playgroup might allow, so ask them ahead of time. But generally in Commander, the rule is that sideboards are not allowed. So in most Commander games, you're basically just going to have to pick that first option. But again, a 4-mana tutor in Commander is very powerful. At $1.34, it's going to cost you more than Diabolic Tutor, but again, it's much cheaper than Demonic Tutor. But now we're going to move on to a 5-mana tutor with Razakest Wright. Razakest Wright, in my opinion, is a very underrated card. It was actually featured on my most recent Quest Recorders episode, so go ahead and check that out if you want to. I won't go into too much detail with this one, but it's a tutor that costs 3 black black. But instead of using it to tutor, you can actually just cycle it for a black. This may cost more than your standard Diabolic Tutor, but you can also replace it if you need to. If you desperately need to draw a card, 1 mana is a very low price to pay. And at just 35 cents, this flexible tutor is extremely affordable. Next up is another 5 mana tutor with Final Parting. It's a sorcery for 3 black black and it says search your library for 2 cards. Put one into your hand and the other into your graveyard then shuffle your library. So let's say that a card like Diabolic Tutor is the standard for your typical tutor and commander. At 4 mana, you get 1 card into your hand. With Final Parting for just 1 more mana, you get an extra card but that card goes into your graveyard. Now in some decks, that might be completely useless. Putting a card into your graveyard might not do anything. But in plenty of decks, this card is absolutely incredible. There are certain cards in Magic that actually want to be in your graveyard. So Final Parting essentially is tutoring for 2 cards and putting them both in the places that you want. For example, in a Gitrog deck, you can get one of your dredge cards and put it directly into your graveyard. In another kind of a deck, you might want to put a creature in there that you can reanimate. Regardless, in those decks, this is getting you two cards that you can use for five mana. So that's essentially one card for two and a half mana. And that's nearly at the rate of Demonic Tutor, which actually can't get any cards directly into your graveyard. Now, Final Parting is nowhere near as powerful as Demonic Tutor. But Final Parting can get you two pieces in the right deck, and Demonic Tutor can still only get you one. And I'm sure there are plenty of two-card combos that Final Parting can go get you and you can just win with. At just 29 cents, in my opinion, this card is extremely undervalued. For the right deck, this is a fantastic budget alternative to Demonic Tutor. For the right deck, another one to consider, though, might be Mausoleum Secrets. It's an instant for one in a black, and it has Undergrowth. 
You search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shelf your library. So Mothlam Secrets actually has the exact same converted mana cost as Demonic Tutor, and on top of that, it's an instant. But with this card, there are definitely limitations that make it great in some decks, but not great in others. First off, it's completely dependent on having creatures in your graveyard. If your deck doesn't have a lot of creatures, or doesn't have consistent ways to get creatures in your graveyard, it's not going to be very effective. On top of that, you are limited to what you can search for. Demonic Tutor can get you any card, but Mosleam Secrets can only get you a black card. Still, with the right deck, this is still a very efficient and effective tutor. I recently did a deck tech on Sir Conrad, and this card is fantastic in it. And it's just 48 cents, it's very affordable if you need it for your deck. Next up, there's Brainspoil, which has Transmute. Now, there are other Transmute cards, but I'm just going to use Brainspoil in this example to illustrate them all. In this example, to Transmute Brainspoil, you have to pay one black black. By paying that, you discard this card, and then search your library for a card with the same converted mana cost as this card, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library, transmute only as a sorcery. So basically, Brain Spoil is tutoring for any card in your library that has a converted mana cost of 5. And again, that transmute cost is only 3 mana. So this is an extremely efficiently costed tutor, but it can only get very specific things. Now there are other transmute cards at different converted mana costs, so use the one that you need for your deck. Now actually casting Brain Spoil for 3 black black does have an effect, it's going to destroy target creature that isn't enchanted and it can't be regenerated. Now typically though, when you're including a transmute card though, you want it for that transmute. If you've got a lot of great cards at 5 mana in your deck, you might want to include Brain Spoil. And transmute cards can be especially effective at getting you combo pieces. So again, for Brain Spoil, if you've got multiple combo pieces that each cost 5 mana, it might be a great include. In the right deck, a transmute card like Brain Spoil can be the most effective tutor that you have. Something to also consider with this is that transmute is an ability. So while a stifle can stomp you, your typical counters won't. And at just 22 cents, Brain Spoil is very affordable. And for the most part, the other transmute cards are pretty cheap too. Next up, there's Demonic Illusion, which can tutor for one card for three black black, and you can buy it back by discarding two cards. So as long as you've got the cards to discard, you can keep getting this back. And in some decks, you even want to discard cards, so this can be very effective. At $1.55, this is a good deal for the right deck. Another budget alternative you might want to consider is Increasing Ambition. It's a sorcery for four and a black, and it says search your library for a card and put that card into your hand. If Increasing Ambition was cast from a graveyard, instead search your library for two cards and put those cards into your hand, then shuffle your library. And it's got a flashback cost of seven and a black. So the first time you cast this, you get one for five mana, and the second time you cast it, you get two for eight. If you can get this into your graveyard a different way, you don't have to cast it the first time. So a card like this might really shine in a mill deck or a discard deck that's looking to tutor for multiple things. And at $1.03, it can fit into most budgets. Again, none of these tutors are going to be nearly as efficient as Demonic Tutor. But typically with the higher costed ones, you're getting some extra value. And for those other low cost tutors, there's usually some limitations that apply. Again, like most expensive commander staples, there is no direct replacement for Demonic Tutor. But there are plenty of budget alternatives that you can consider that are a lot more affordable and can work great in your deck. But now let's tackle another commander staple with Birds of Paradise. Now at $7.16, there are some people out there that won't see this as expensive. Yes, compared to a $25 card like Demonic Tutor, it's a lot cheaper. But at its current price, it's a commander staple that's not going to fit into any of my budget decks. And there are plenty of others out there that aren't going to want to pay up for it either. Regardless, let's get into the card itself. Birds of Paradise, or BOP for short, is a 0-1 flying bird that costs a green. It has tap, add one man of any color to your mana pool. So basically, this is one of the best mana dorks in the history of magic. It can ramp you on turn one and can fix your mana. On top of that, because it has flying, it can be a fantastic blocker later in the game. It's just a very efficient and effective card. It's been reprinted plenty of times and there's a reason its price is still where it is. There really aren't any other mana dorks that are as efficient in fix your mana. But let's tackle the efficient budget alternatives first. First up there's Land of Else, which costs a green and it taps for a green. Now this does ramp you at the same speed, but it's not going to help you fix your mana. It's still very efficient and very effective in plenty of decks though. And at just 15 cents, it's a lot more affordable. There are actually two other cards that are essentially functional reprints of Land of Elves. The first of those is Elvish Mystic, which is at 20 cents. And the second is the slightly more pricey Finehorn Elves at $1.80. But Finehorn Elves is still definitely cheaper than Birds of Paradise. In a green deck, you might just prefer all these elves anyways. You sacrifice the flying, but you get a 1-1 instead of a 0-1. Another creature that can ramp you on turn 1 is Boreal Druid. Unlike the other elves, it taps for a colorless. So this still ramps you, but definitely doesn't help you fix your mana. At $3.18, it's definitely on the pricier end too, but still cheaper than Birds of Paradise. And a final one drop to consider is Arbor Elf. It has tap, untap target forest. So depending on the situation, this can be worse or can even be better. If you don't have a forest to untap, this can't ramp you. But you might have something like a breeding pool in play that you can untap and tap for blue. On top of that, if you've got a forest that's enchanted and can tap for more than one mana, you're going to be gaining a lot of mana with this. And at just 35 cents, this is a great deal for the right deck. But for most mana dorks that help you fix your mana, they're going to cost two mana. For example, Utopia Tree is a 0-2 that costs one in a green and it taps add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So four creatures on the ground, this is a slightly better blocker. But since it costs one more mana, it's definitely slower than Birds of Paradise. Still, at $1.38, it's much more affordable. 
We've got a few more mana dorks that cost one in a green, and they each tap for one mana of any color, so let's go through them now. There's Drove of the Mighty, which is a 1-1 that gets plus 2 plus 2 if you control a dinosaur, and it's only 33 cents. Then there's Gemhide Sliver, which is a 1-1 Sliver, and it says all slivers you have have tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. And currently, Gemhide Sliver is $1.72. And then Mana Weft Sliver is very similar at $1.69. It has sliver creatures you control have tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Now, obviously, these two slivers are great for sliver decks, but they can run in any green deck. Again, compared to Birds of Paradise, they're definitely slower, but are still very effective. A slightly faster mana dork than these is Beast Caller Savant. It costs one in a green, and it has haste, and it says tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool, spend this mana only to cast a creature spell. So you can use its mana right away, but it's only going to be effective in a creature deck. At just 35 cents, though, it's an absolute steal for the right deck. And the final mana dork that we'll tackle today is Quirion Elves. It costs one in a green, and when it enters the battlefield, you choose a color. It can either tap for green, or can tap for that color. So in a two-color deck, this basically taps for all the colors that you need. And this can almost fix your mana in a three-color deck, so it might be worth including there too. At just 15 cents, it's a very budget-friendly card. Now when it comes to mana dorks, Birds of Paradise is one of the best. It's hard to argue with how efficiently it can ramp you and fix your mana. With other mana dorks, for the most part, you have to make the trade-off of doing either one or the other. But still, if you're looking to add some mana dorks to your deck, there are a ton of great budget options out there. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn to hear from you. In the comments below, let me know what your favorite budget alternative is. And make sure that you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Links to our social media accounts can be found in the description. Also in the description below is a link to the Commander's Quarters Patreon page, and I just want to say a quick thank you to the patrons who have subscribed so far. There are many benefits to being a patron for the Commander's Quarters, including being able to vote on future Commanders for deck techs. There's even a general level tier where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. I truly couldn't do this without all of your support, so from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again, and have a good one. <laughs>